This video is powered by As Always Entertainment. If you enjoy this content, consider becoming a patron over on patreon.com forward slash as always for access to the Patreon exclusive podcast, The Kill Connor Clubhouse, early access to the Cinema Room podcast, being a part of polls for future videos, and other early access material. With that said, please enjoy the video. So, to thank our Patreon producers of this video for making this video happen, we have King Richard III, Ecraig, Seth, and Josh Devlier. Thanks for the support, guys. Hey guys, it is Tyler here back once again with another Fable 4 video. This time we have so much more info, we're only a week away from E3, so it seems about right that we get a Fable 4 leak right about now. Now, last year I made another video talking about why Fable 4 is all but confirmed, and Playground Games are developing it, uh, who make Forza Horizon. And here, today, I can say that it looks to be true once again. At E3 last year, I didn't expect it to be shown, but it was mentioned by Phil Spencer at the Microsoft E3 press event that Playground Games were working on another secret big project. So, looks like we're going to be hearing about it next week at E3, and we've had a leak of info in the past 24 hours. Plus, I've gone back and actually found a few other details and bits of info in the last month the point to Fable 4 being not only all but confirmed, but we're going to see it soon, by the looks of it. So the first thing was, on Reddit yesterday, there was a post after a leaked video came out. The video has been taken down, the video is gone, but I'm going to read through some of the info and give you my thoughts on the information and how I've kind of put it together. So potentially, if this is real, there are some spoilers ahead from what I'm going to be discussing. So just fair warning. I'll link this Reddit post, I'll link all the articles I talk about in the description if you want to have a read yourself and check it out. So the first thing it says um, by Lagswag1, who said, Video is gone, but I snagged a screenshot of the info the leak gave. First thing is first and third person, so that would be the first time we've seen that. There was a way you could switch to first person if you were standing still in previous Fable games, just to kind of get a cinematic view, I guess, if you wanted to screenshot stuff, or it was almost like a, an old school photo mode. Um, but they've never had actual walk around first person from my understanding other than of course the connect game that was first person but we don't count that but in main main fable games it's always third person so interesting they're doing the switch between first and third the second thing is in-depth character creator i think it's about time for that uh, you've obviously always been able to make your character look a certain way in some ways depending on how you played obviously in fable one you know, it depended on, obviously you got to pick how you dressed, but you kind of always looked a certain way other than decisions you made then led to you growing, building a certain physique, to you being a certain height, to you getting, I mean, if you were bad, you got bloody devil horns, and that was the same with Fable 2 as well, and that went a bit more in depth depending on kind of what upgrades you went for and what attributes you focused on. So that's the only way you can kind of build your character from like this scrawny person to sort of a stronger, more skilled devil worshipping or like light guy. So, you know, it makes sense that from the start you get a bit more of control. Obviously people want to choose male, female or, you know, uh, races as well. So it makes sense that they're allowing that. And then I still hope to see the attributes change for your characters throughout the game. I always love that in Fable, that as you play, your character grows and develops physique, depending on how you're playing, depending on what attributes you're upgrading and focusing on. I'd still like to see that on top of an in-depth character created to make your face look how you want it to look and have the kind of person be, I guess, similar to yourself if you like creating character that's like you or creating someone that looks ridiculous or however you want to do it. It's your world, right? So uh, it's good. It's about time I've done that, though I still hope the attributes come into it later on as you play through. Completely open is the next thing, which is pretty awesome. In all previous Fable games, uh, the main maps have been kind of done in blocks, or I should say in sort of areas. So if you wanted to go to Bowerstone, you had to load screen in between going to Bowerstone, Old Town, Bowerstone Market, or Bower Lake, or wh wherever you're going, there was always like load screens in between areas. So, I think now, it makes more sense than ever that whatever this world or continent or country that we're playing in, that's not Albion, I'll get to that later, uh, is completely open world. Uh, the, whole, the whole map will be completely open world. You know, it's, it's hard to do load screens in between areas these days with the technology we've got, especially if this game is next generation, which I believe it is. 
though there's there is a potential it's it's kind of a, a cross gen game that's comes out uh, on the as a launch title on the next console, which means it'll probably come out on Xbox One, PlayStation Four as well. But we don't know yet. We don't know yet. This game certainly isn't coming out this year. Certainly not. Uh, no guns. So that's kind of the first hint that of the setting we're going with because we're not going to be in Albion where Fable 2 and 3 were in that sort of industrial revolution period where there were guns. Um, we're a bit further back than that, but also in the future. It makes sense. I'll, I'll explain it later. I swear to God. It also says you can ignore main quest and never become a hero. So, I mean, there's obviously, and from later info you get, there's a lot to this game It sounds like they're putting into it in terms of extra content to focus on and ways to play the game. It doesn't have to be a, you play the main quest, you become a hero, and there, there's the story. There's a whole lot of side storylines to do. There's a whole lot of side gameplay mechanics to be involved in, uh, including the next section is players can build towns. So that's obviously going to be something in, that's involved. Economics has always been a big part of Fable, with buying properties and owning businesses and working jobs and things like that. So I having that kind of upgraded into building towns and more involved in that side of things makes a lot of sense. And that's what I guess it means where you can ignore the main quest. There's going to be so many different things to do and hopefully that includes post-game. So once you finish the main quest, there's still going to be heaps of content to be a part of. And that's what it sounds like because I've heard people upset about this next part. So it says players can build towns, tears into main quest heavily if you get the bad ending and fail. I heard people saying, oh, that's like Fable 3 where you had to make money and leave your Xbox on overnight so you didn't get the bad ending. That's not what it's saying here. That's not what that's saying. It says, building towns goes into the main quest heavily if you do get the bad ending. Not not to not get the bad ending. It's if you get the bad ending, you're going to need to build towns. And this, again, will make sense the further we get into this. I'll come back to that point just in a bit. Next section is multiplayer, which Fable's had co-op before, so if it's just the classic cult where someone can jump into your world and play with you, that's awesome. Uh, potentially, this popped into my head, there was the multiplayer they were making Fable Legends uh, before Lionhead closed down. It was in beta, so there's a potential that Playground Games has taken that and kind of jigged it up a bit, and there's just a totally side multiplayer section of the game that is set in Albion that's kind of like... Uh, an old fables, a land of fables multiplayer mode where you play as all these old heroes in Albion in, when you're pretty much doing the same style as Fable Legends. I didn't play the beta. I know um, James did. and I'm not sure if that's... And he said it wasn't all that great. But who knows? Maybe they've improved it. But that could be a potential thing to add to it. They had a whole game. Why not use it and put it into your game? Uh, then they said Unreal Engine, which is great. I think that was... In the information we got at the start of 2018, actually, that Unreal Engine was being used, but I'm not totally sure. Now we have a next section of information about the world and the storyline and where we are with Albion. Well, it says Albion and Aurora are gone, in quotes, lands reduced to fables. The spire was rebuilt and used by a mad king to wish that an asteroid would strike the planet. He also wished it would happen again in the far future. So the spire was the main story element of Fable 2. This evil Lord Lucian wanted to build this spire to rebuild the world and do something pretty much similar to this, reset the world, destroy it, and rebuild it anew. Um, so it seems like it happened again, even though you stopped him from doing that in Fable 2. Um, the spire's then been rebuilt by a mad king, um, and he wished an asteroid to Aurora, Albion gone. And the world's kind of eons later rebuilt itself. There's new continents. The whole world's reset. This is a whole... This is literally them saying, we're rebooting. Re Everything that happened before, yeah, it happened. That's cool. We're not totally rebooting the franchise. But we're rebooting the franchise. This is going to be our continent, our world. Albion, that's Lionheads. This is going to be ours. I'm not sure what it's going to be called. Who knows? But it's been reset. And it also means we don't have to go back in time to go back back in time in terms of setting because this is supposedly set in medieval themed so no guns which is phenomenal and that was similar to what fable one was set and that's what many fable fans from the original game have been waiting to get rid of the guns and shit or, or, rid of the industrial revolution go back to medieval times where you can really be heavily involved in the magic and the heroes and 
cool shit like that. So I'm excited for that stuff. So eons later, and everything is new, medieval theme, new continents, and you have to stop the destruction of the planet again. So obviously this prophecy of this other asteroid I imagine comes into it. And that's exciting, that's cool. I imagine Teresa and people will come involved into telling you and leading you as a character in this hero on the main quest line to saving the world again. Now this is where I want to go back to this players can build towns, tears into main quest heavily if you get the bad ending. So I imagine the bad ending is the asteroid hits. Somehow you don't die and other people don't die and the world is being rebuilt and you then have all this post game where you can build towns and rebuild the world anew because the asteroids hit. So potentially the bad ending is, you know, you rebuilding the world afterwards because you failed. So it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it makes a lot of sense that building towns comes into it uh, if that's the case. It then says Teresa and the heroes got are preserved on another planet via a demon door. Now I'm not sure what they mean by another planet. Obviously demon doors have always taken us to sort of different magical realms and dimensions and what looks like other planets in some demon doors. I remember Fable 3 there's one on like the moon but I don't know if it's actually on the moon as much as it's in a magical realm that makes it look like a certain place. So when they say another planet Take that with a grain of salt. I don't think they mean specifically another planet, though the Heroes Guild and Teresa herself have been taken to another magical realm that is hidden via a demon door, and that's how you kind of become a hero, I guess. I hope Teresa's heavily involved in the story. She's one of the uh, key pillars that is Fable, and I'd love to see her back and guiding you like she guided our characters in Fable 2 and 3, and in some ways Fable 1 in a lot of ways. Uh, time travel heavily involved in play, and Jack of Blades returns. So Jack of Blades returns, that's obviously amazing, and going to be a cool, like, original fan, OG thing, um, for him to come back and be potentially an enemy, who knows how he's going to be involved, whether he's like the main villain, or just a villain, or, I don't know, maybe he has his own sort of quest line that's on the side, maybe it's not even the main quest, we don't know yet, but it's cool he's back. Time travel heavily involved in play is interesting, especially with the world of Albion uh, being, uh, you know, years and eons before. So potentially going back to see Albion to maybe get information, learn skills of heroes, or get, see things, I don't know, I'm not sure, or maybe get artifacts things like that that need to help you in, in the main world or just potentially just telling us stories about what's happened to the world but to say that time travel is heavily involved not just involved I'm not sure exactly what that means how it would heavily be involved uh, other than to be a maybe a part of the main quest line to see what that mad king did or maybe having to go back to stop things from happening if you fail once I don't know I don't know but there's a lot of reasons I could see time travel being involved, and that's really just to see what happened in the past and to be able to go to Albion again, potentially, which would be awesome, would be amazing. Um, so that's great. And even to see and kind of give certain takes on and view Fable 1, 2, and 3 in a different light with this new character in this new world and kind of how those fables are viewed in the future. I don't know. It's exciting. It's very exciting, this information. So that's the information that came out in the last 24 hours. I went back and looked back, and there was only a report May 26th last week that Fable 4 was listed on Mixer, which is Microsoft's dedicated streaming service. So, it's already been listed on things. Fable 4 is there. So, that's another thing that's leading up to E3, and I didn't even know that had happened. That had kind of gone under the radar for me. So, I was like, holy shit, only a week ago it's been listed. That's another thing that's making this leak a bit more truthful. Do I believe this leak? I do, especially since people say they've seen a vi Like, I'm reading the Reddit thread. People saw a video. There's an asteroid thing that hit a place like Albion. There's no narration. So I'm not entirely sure. I Obviously, take with a grain of salt, but it's very random that a Fable 4 leak a week before E3 has just come out like this with this much information. And it makes a lot of sense as well. Uh, I believe it's probably true. Um, maybe with a few different things that people might have misinformation got wrong, like calling uh, Teresa and Heroes Guild being preserved on another planet. I'm taking that in a fable sense. It's a magical realm, probably. It's on an actual other planet. I'd say 
unless they're going all out on this, I don't know, I don't know, but it's just weird that a random leak would come a week before E3, right when you expect this game to be announced E3 as it was, maybe it's Fable fans jumping on it, trying to get some attention, I don't know, but I'm probably going with most likely true, I'm like 80% towards this being, you know, real. Another thing is only a month ago in April, I don't know how this got missed, some people picked it up, I certainly didn't, uh, Playground Games Artist, posted concept art this was on neogaf so a user scathic eileen said was browsing through the art station profile of vagintas pacinus concept artist for playground games and i found this title good deeds so it's concept art that looks like medieval setting and it just looks like oakvale the main town of our hero in fable one Obviously, it looks like a different sort of style, but it's got the old entrance via that bridge. It's got the tree in the center of the town and buildings in similar positions. And it's got what looks to be a hero standing there with, you know, a quiver with some arrows in it and a medieval style sword and attire. It looks beautiful as well. It looks very realistic and beautiful. And there's a few other concept pieces in what looks like a more industrious sort of town, like the Bowerstone looking town in the distance looks to be a castle up at the top. This looks like Albion to me. So potentially this is the time travel stuff. I don't know, especially because it doesn't make sense, obviously, that Oakvale would be on this new continent. So they're either doing concept of these time travel elements in Fable, where you go back to Albion, or... Or they're just doing concept art of old Fable places to give inspiration because there's other places in other concept art that looks a bit, you know, a bit different. And I'm not sure if that's all included uh, and whether it's all Fable where you see these, you know, maybe light worshippers and there's this warrior statue going on in building style that I've never seen in a Fable before. Very mountainous region. So there's some things that I'm like, okay, this looks like it's new. But then, what looks to be a medieval bower stone and oak veil, as well as in the concept art, I don't know what to take from it, to be totally honest. I don't know what to say, but it's very interesting, and I'm very excited about what's to come from this, from Fable at E3 next week. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Fable news. I'm going to be following this game. I am so jacked up. I haven't been motivated to do videos in like two months. But with this Fable news, I'm so excited. I'm on the train. If you want Fable content, this is the place to be. So I will see you guys very soon. Hopefully next week I'll do a video with E3 and the announcement of Fable 4 or Fable something or other, whatever they're going to call it, by Playground Games. So I'll see you then. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you later.